Hello and welcome uh, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, David Bizant and I'm the tele-advisor for the Faculty of Health and Wellbeing. Um, now this morning, uh, or this afternoon depending on uh, what time of day you're watching this, I'm going to be uh, taking you through um, PebblePad version 5, uh, some of the changes that have happened and also some of the things that have stayed the same compared to version 3. Um, if you're looking for a tutorial that covers um, uh, how to use PebblePad for the very first time, um, this video is not the best video to watch. Uh, other um, videos will be available. Um, what um, where this really fits is is for those that have been using version three, have been using uh, and used to using PebblePad before, but are needing to know. Um, as of the changes of September the 5th, um, what has actually changed and how that might affect them uh, and the way that their work looks and how they might work on it in the future. Okay, so the screen that we're looking at now is the landing page in PebblePad. Um, now it's worth saying whether you are an academic or a student, um, you can access uh, PebblePad using exactly the same method that you have done before using version 3 so that might be through a link in Blackboard or going direct to the PebblePad website or ho however you've been previously instructed to access it you should still be able to access it the same way uh, the big difference now obviously is that rather than um, uh, you being taken to the well the default picture which is 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 the pebbles stacked up on top of each other um, you now get the screen that you're seeing seeing here. Um, so I'll just give you a quick tour. Now, as you can see, um, you've got all these boxes and windows um, on the screen, and these are sort of just quick links. Uh, it, they're there to help you get to what it is you might want um, with as few button clicks as, as possible. So um, as you can see here on the left, I've got my profile, which I can edit. Um, and below that, it allows me a quick access to my asset store, how well are my workers, or my resource store. Um, underneath that, uh, there's a box that handily tells me what it is that I last worked on. So if you're only ever working on, on one piece, uh, one web folio or something like that, then that will show up here and you'll be able to click on that and you'll be able to go straight into working and editing on that piece of work. Um, You've also got the ability to view your history and then you can see everything that you've worked on and, and when and, and find quick links to get to it that way. Um, this next box is all about things that you can work on. So you can work on your templates and workbooks, that's part of your learning, um, to make your custom resources. Or again, there's another box which again um, takes you directly to your assets. There's a handy number here which tells you how many assets you've got. Um, uh, the more you have, I don't think it means prizes, but um, it, it gets quite interesting. Certainly, once you start to build up large amounts of assets, with there, there's still uh, there's still not files and folders in the asset store. It still just lists everything in date order. Uh, but they've got some good new filtering tools that I'll show you about in a bit to help you with that. Um, this next box is get creative. So that's if you're wanting to start something fresh from new. So uh, again, you can um, start building a new portfolio or build a new page, um, or blog, and say it's activity logs. Um, down here, you've got the what's happening. Um, now, this is something that's uh, most powerful. It, it puts in um, key dates and, and things that are coming up, but it's it's designed ideally to be used with a piece of software called Flourish. Um, which uh, the university doesn't currently use. So um, for what's happening in dates and requirements like that, you still want to use Blackboard um, and see that. So this box will largely remain blank uh, and unfilled out. Um, up here at the top right, um, you've got something called the Learning Center, and that's basically where you can find all your help. Um, now, certainly the first time that you um, go into PebblePad, um, I'd really recommend uh, going to the Learning Centre and having a look around because there's some fantastic resources in there. The, the, the help that they've put together is is very good. Um, 
uh, it's better than say the screencast I'm putting together for you and it takes you through all the key functionality how to build things and things like that um, that you may need to use in Pebblepad. Um, it is quite general so it's not quite as specific as I can get as far as how it relates to the university and the way that we do things um, but it's considerably better than the help function in, in a lot of other programs and software. And then below that you've got the uh, ability to upload new so um, in a direct button so if you've taken a load of photos in placement or, or um, you've got a lot of resources that you want to upload straight away into a portfolio or, or workbook um, and you just need to get lots of content on you've now got a direct link on the front page to be able to click on that and then just upload that content straight from the hard drive of your computer um, and that will go straight into your asset store without leaving this page okay now up at the top uh, there's not that many buttons um, in the top left hand corner you've got something called the burger menu um, it's called burger you can see it apparently looks like a burger um, now that's there uh, that's the main menu basically um, that's where you can access everything uh, like I say it's diff different to the, the the quick links down here um, you can access everything that way um, the pebble pad logo will take you home You've then got uh, this, which is your Pebble Plus, which is basically where you are now. And you've also got an Atlas link. Uh, this symbol here, that's the Flourish symbol. You you won't have that on yours. Um, on the right at the top, you've then got the ability to search. And you can find anything that you might have in the Asset Star or anything like that. Um, you've got the ability to view your history uh, and everything that you've done and when you've done it. And you've got the ability to obviously log out of PebblePad. So if we go to the left and have a quick look at the burger menu. So as you can see now, um, it gives you a list of options down the left hand side. So the top one and then the most common one normally is that you want to go to your asset store and look at your assets and possibly pick out what it is you might want to uh, do in there uh, and work on. You've got your resource store. Again, the ability to upload a file. You can start working on templates and workbooks. You can get creative. You've then got the learning center with help and things. And then you've got some additional settings. Now those additional settings do include um, where it is that you will go uh, when you finish your course or if you're directing students to where they might go when they finish their course um, to make their account an account for life. Obviously, you don't want to do that before the end of the program but when you do um, that's where you'll find that function to, to request making your account um, go beyond uh, the university so um, if I click on the get creative it will then um, create a drop down um, and here um, you've got the ability to create a portfolio create a page um, create a collection an activity log blog a workbook or a template. Um, now obviously this is for existing PebblePad users so that terminology should be um, already quite common and known to you um, but if not um, uh, just as a reminder so the portfolio tool something that uh, you might use or an academic shared with you which will give you a template for you to be able to build up your work all in one place um, and then when you've done that um, be able to share or, or share it for assessment, um, uh, for marking, or, or just to collect all, all your work together in a nice spot. Um, a page is obviously just uh, if you know you think you might want to create a portfolio later, but you've just got something that you want to record, you can just create one single page uh, and then you can put that inside a portfolio later. Um, I wouldn't worry um, about collections if, you, if you're not quite sure what they are. It means you don't need to uh, to, to use them. Uh, you've got your activity log, uh, the ability to create a blog, uh, which is self-explanatory, uh, and then you've got the workbook. So again, it's more for academic stuff. Obviously, if you create a workbook, um, then that's obviously the resource of which you. Uh, you set the content and then just create boxes of which students um, or users will be able to fill out. Um, you 
keep ownership. And then you've also got the ability to create a template, which is the, you know, just one page of a workbook, just like a pages for the create portfolio. Okay. I hope that made some sense. Um, so if I just now uh, nip into the asset store, as you can see it loads now. Now one of the things that you might notice, and, and this has been planned for the whole of uh, Pebblepad version 5, is um, is it's designed to work across all devices. So now, unlike before, um, if you've ever used Pebblepad on an, on an iPad, um, when you're logged in, it always looked very different to the version on the PC, and that can add confusion easily. Um, now, um, it should look and work the same way on um, on a PC, on an iPad, on a phone. Obviously, the scales change, um, but, but generally, it should look the same. So, this is now what your asset style looks like. And again, at the top, you've got the ability to look at your assets, you can change and look at your resources, you can look at the content that you've deleted, and then if you've connected any drives up, um, again I've got a Google Drive that I've connected to Pebblepad, then I can look in there as well. Um, again, as default, you've got all your assets here on the left hand side, um, and again as default, it's organised by uh, the newest first. Um, You've then got uh, the ability to uh, search at the top directly for an asset. Um, you can change the ordering. As you can see here, there's lots of different options for how it is you might reorder. Uh, and even if that doesn't help you organize it, you've got an advanced search. And then um, the advanced search allows you to um, go into you know much more detail. Um, on how to find the asset and things that you might want to look for. Right, so if I have a quick look now in resources. Uh, again, resources is where things is that you shared or may have been shared with you. Um, so as you can see, you can see on the symbols, um, there's obviously workbooks and uh, resources like that shared in there. Um, I'll just nip back to the assets. So, um, on the right hand side, next to your advanced search, is the upload file, again, so if you're just wanting to upload some content into your asset style for, for use later, you can upload it there, um, and then like I say, you've got the assets. Now, something that's new to version 5 is, as you can see, as you move along, you've got these different symbols, uh, and different things next to these different symbols. So, for this asset, I can see that it has uh, comments on it and there's eight comments on it so again if if you're a student and an academics uh, put comments on your work it should be that in your asset store you can see the comments have been added and you can click on that and, and, and view the comments um, again if you're an academic you can click on that and add comments if you'd like as well um, and, and again you can add comments if you're a student the next across is feedback so as you can see that's greyed out, that means there isn't any, uh, but I can uh, either add or view feedback by clicking on there. Um, I can then see that it's uh, this is an asset that's been shared with me. Um, if I look at the one below, so I've got the comments, I've got the feedback, I've then got this symbol, um, which is whether it's been shared with other users, so again, um, it might be that you want to personally share something with a tutor. So it's not shared for assessments, it's just shared with another individual. So that might be for collaborative work, um, or it might be, um, like I said, just so they can view and comment on it uh, without using, you know, Atlas and, and the workspace. Uh, you've then got the ability to share for the web. Now this is really great. If you're wanting to show your work to prospective employers uh, easily, our colleagues, or uh, people uh, outside the university that don't have access to Pebblepad, if you share if you share your asset or your your webfolio or workbook or what have you to the web, then it means anybody that you give the uh, web link to will be able to view 
and see that work um, on any, you know, whichever internet browser that they choose to. And you can even set that up so they're able to add comments to it as well, if you'd like. So it works really well for um, pre-call sites. If you wanted to get content to students before they're able to access uh, things that say on Blackboard and, and, and have been registered with the university. Um, and it's also great if you're wanting to um, create a CV, uh, a nice online professional looking CV that you can then share with employers and things like that. It's great for that. Um, and then the next symbol is shared for assessment. So um, in a lot of cases, um, when you it will be set up that when you automatically start working on content, it will probably be shared for assessment. But that means here, it will show that it's been shared for assessment, so you can feel confident that it's um, that that's the case. And then when the deadline arrives, um, it's there to be marked. Um, or if it's not been done automatically, this allows you to then select where it is you want to share this uh, to. Uh, for assessment so basically it gives you access to um, Atlas and it, it, it's a nice step-by-step -step, um, process and then on the far right um, you've got the ability to view more information um, on that asset so if I if I click on that now it will open up and then the first thing it, it shows you is um, information about that file so you know uh, the obvious things the title when it was created uh, when I last worked on it, um, who made it, um, and then you know if there's I was logged against it, and, and again the institution that it was made with, um, and that's the info. Now again, it, up at the top here, um, you can also see comments. So I can add a comment easily to type in here, and post comment, and I'll have added a comment uh, onto that asset. Um, and then I've also got feedback. So again, it showed me that there is no feedback on this asset. Um, if there was, it would show me and I'd be able to see that feedback. And the other box in here, up at the top left, is I want to. Now you'll see I want to come up now and again in version 5. Um, and it's a very good way um, of Pebblepad basically giving you the next step of a process of, of what you might want to do. So I've got this asset, I'm looking at the information, I'm clearly trying to do something. So it's, I want to, it allows you to open that asset, you can take a copy, um, I can share it with someone, I can delete it, or I can print it. Um, again, the print option is something that, that many people don't realize that they can do if you've created a portfolio or something like that and it's quite nice you, you've got the ability to print out a paper copy um, uh, you've got the ability to delete and you've also got the ability to share so if I click on the share uh, now it's got the asset at the top and then it gives me the options whether I want to share it with people with the web or for assessment uh, so for example um, if I click on for assessment you can see now that it gives me an options of all the workspaces I'm part of. Now, it's quite likely whether you um, that, that you're going to have considerably less workspaces than me. I'm unfortunately, I'm on an awful lot of workspaces, so it does look quite congested. And you can see a cross or a tick, and that'll tell you whether it's a workspace um, you can share to. Um, now, what you can do is look at your list, and you're looking for probably if it's certainly if you're a student is is the module title you know the blackboard sites title uh, and then you can click on that again you can see the name of the workspace it, it's not guaranteed but most likely because as default this is the way they're set up it will be the uh, the same title as your blackboard site so by checking that your blackboard module site is exactly the same name as the workspace um, that you're submitting your work um, to, to that module site and, and, and for that assessment. So um, what I've then got is, um, I'll scroll down, I can check that the title's right. Um, there's important dates, so again if, it, if it's been set of uh, when it needs to have been shared, things like that, I can see it. 
and then terms of usage which is basically saying i know that i'm aware that uh, i'm sharing this and uh, people um, academics and, and and people involved in my assessment at the university can see it um, i can declare that and i just take share for assessment and then that's shared now again that's just going through some of the functionality it's quite likely again if, if you are um, using pebble pad and you're going to be doing assessment that um, that's been set up automatically you might notice as well that as i'm going back through these windows uh, unlike version 3 it doesn't create a lot of uh, pop-ups of boxes over boxes it's now pretty much you're just working on that one screen um, and at any point in time i can uh, click on my pebble plus and again it will take me back to my home screen now if i just click on the burger menu so that's where you can go to see all your main menu i'm going to click back on the asset star and then it will load up all your assets again this is the place where you're most likely to go if you're just uh, wanting to do, continue working on something that you've uh, that you've created uh, now when it comes to um, looking at the differences within the portfolios and the workbooks for pebble pad uh, version 5 i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a separate uh, short screencast for um what the workbooks look like and then a short separate screencast for what the um uh, web folios look like i'm not sure if i've repeated myself there <laughs> So yeah, two separate screencasts, one for the web folios and one for the workbooks. Um, so as far as um, what the home screen looks like and how to navigate and where to find things, that's uh, uh, that's it from me. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you found this useful and um, uh, good luck with your working version 5. I hope you enjoy it.